In this video, we're going to cover the on error go to statement in Excel VBA. So, you use this statement when you anticipate an error occurring while you're running your code. So, I want to give you a preview of what we're going to create today. So, I have a data set of inventory items for a furniture store company. And to the left here is a daily report that I drop in here. I have inventory ID and the quantity on hand. To the right, I have a lookup table that also has the inventory ID and the product description. And what I do each day is perform a for loop to pull in the description with a VLOOKUP to this table here. So the problem is sometimes I have new items that pop up on this daily report that are not found on this lookup table and I have to add them manually. And when this happens, my code stops running, I get a generic error message. What I want to do is use the on error go to statement to create a message box that pops up when a match is not found and it tells me which inventory item the match is not found and once I click OK it continues to run the code on the remaining items in my daily list so I'm going to show you what this does so when I click run on this code it fills in all the items up until a match is not found so I get a message box that says item number A2916 is not on the lookup table and when I click OK it continues to run the code on the remaining items where a match is found. So the first thing we want to do is get into the VBA editor window. You can do that by hitting Alt F11 on your keyboard. Anywhere in this project window I'm going to right click go to insert and then module. We'll call this subroutine on error and begin by declaring some variables. So the first variable is going to be called WB for workbook. It's going to be as the data type workbook represents the workbook we're in now. The second variable is going to be called WS for worksheet. It's going to be as the data type worksheet represents the worksheet we're on now. We're going to have a variable called lookup range. So I'll just call this LRNG. It's going to be as the data type range and this is just going to represent columns F through G where our lookup table is located. Now all of these are object variables so they need to begin with the keyword set. So we're going to set our workbook variable equal to this workbook. We're going to set our worksheet variable equal to our workbook variable we just created and then worksheets and we're on sheet one so we're just going to reference the index number of that sheet going to set our lookup range variable equal to our worksheet variable and then range columns f through g where our lookup table is located so to start out what i'm going to do is create our for loop to run through our rows here and perform a lookup to our lookup table based on the lookup value in column A to produce the description in column C. And I'm going to do it without the on error go to statement first so you can see what it looks like without it and then we'll add it in. So I'm going to declare a counter variable called I. It's going to be as the data type long because that's going to represent each of our rows in row 2 through 21 as we perform our loop. So we begin our for loop with the keyword for, reference our counter variable, and then define a beginning and ending point, which the beginning point is row 2. We want it to go till row 21. So what we want to perform during this loop is with our worksheet variable and then cells 
and that has an input for row and column. Our row input is going to be our counter variable that represents our rows. Our column index is going to be column 3 because we want to produce the description in column C and we want to set that equal to application because the application allows us to get to worksheet function and then from there we can get to the VLOOKUP function. I'm going to expand this just a little so we have a little more room to see everything. So the first argument of the VLOOKUP is our lookup value which is going to be our worksheet cells, our row index, and then our lookup is in column A, so that's the first column. Our next argument is our lookup array, which is going to be equal to our lookup range variable we created earlier. We want to return column 2, and then we want an exact match, so we're going to put 0 there. And then we have the keyword next and our counter variable to go to the next increment or iteration of our counter variable. So we began at 2. This will increment to 3 and repeat these steps until we go all the way to row 21. So I'll go ahead and run this. And you can see it runs up until the point where our error occurs and we can try and debug or end. We just get a generic runtime error message. So I'll click end here. So that doesn't really tell us what's going on here that well. I mean, we do know it's something to do with the VLOOKUP. So now what we want to do is add an on error go to statement up above our for loop. So that begins with on error and then go to and we need to give the go to statement a label so we'll call this em for error message and what we're telling it is okay when an error occurs we want our code to jump to wherever this label is located so down here we're going to reference our label again with a colon and then what we want to do is display a message that tells the user exactly what's causing the error. So we're going to use a message box and we really only need the first input value here which is the prompt, the message we want to display. So what I want to do is get the cell value of where we are in our loop that is causing the error. So we're going to reference our worksheet cells, the row we're currently on in our loop, and then the column number of that lookup value, which is column A. And then we're going to use an AND symbol to join this to a message. So in double quotes, I'm going to add space and then is not on the lookup table. So I'll run this again and we get a message that tells us exactly which value in our list here item A2916 is not on the lookup table. So I click OK and our code stops running though. We don't want that. We want to get that message and then once we click OK, we want our code to continue on until the loop is done. So what we can do then is add another go to statement. And the nice thing about the go to is it has backwards capability. So we can jump back to somewhere in our previous code and that's just what we want to do. So. I'm just going to add another label that says resume i. We'll just call that for our counter variable. So right above our next keyword, that's where we're going to put our label so that it will resume the next iteration in our loop. Now, 
one very important thing we need to do here is right underneath this next iteration of our loop we want to exit the subroutine because once this loop is done we don't want to run this code again because otherwise it will create a never-ending continuous loop and we don't want that because once our loop is done we're basically done with this subroutine so we want to exit the sub without initializing this again so I will run this again you can see we get our error message as usual and this time when I click OK our code should continue to populate the remaining values here and there it is well that is all for now thanks for watching please remember to subscribe